that there was some definable picture of God in his head, head, who is literally the kind of I don't know how anyone can believe in such a God. Not too long ago, I had a super interesting encounter on a flight out of Denver. As I took my seat and began reading whatever book I happened to have with me, it became obvious that the guy sitting next to me was looking over my shoulder and catching a few glances of whatever it was. He must have saw the word God or some religious terminology because rather casually, the guy leaned over and he says, looks like an interesting book. But then after a short pause, just bluntly out of nowhere, the guy says, but I'm an atheist. Well, evidently he was an outgoing guy and looking for some conversation. So I said, actually, I'm an atheist too. Clearly he was a little surprised, no doubt because of the book I was reading. He was like, seriously, you're an atheist? Yeah, absolutely, I told him. Then I threw him an unexpected curveball. I said, describe for me the God you don't believe in. He was jolted, to say the least, by the question. But I knew that there was some definable picture of God in his head that gave rise to his atheism. But he went silent, so I figured, conversation over. But then after thinking for a moment or two, the guy opens the conversation again, and he says, you know what I mean, a super powerful, supreme being presiding somewhere in the sky that rules over us with absolute control. He paused again, and then he just plowed forward, man. He just let it all out. You know, before we're born, this God decides who gets to go to heaven, who's going to burn in hell forever. Of course, we have no say in the matter because he's Mr. Almighty God. It's his universe. So how dare anybody question him? He can do whatever he jolly well pleases. Well, he was on a roll now doing a great job of defining his atheism and mine too. It's all utter nonsense, he went on. And we're supposed to love this tyrant? I don't even like him. And I'm pretty sure that liking someone has got to come before loving them. It's more like a monster than a god. I was right with this guy, I have to tell you. Just right with him. Yeah, I totally agree, I said. It's, it, it's, it's a pretty diabolical picture, huh? Yeah, he said. I don't know how anyone can believe in such a god. Me neither, I agreed. I certainly don't. I don't believe in the existence of any such God as you've just described. But I want to ask you another question. I mean, hypothetically, just for the sake of discussion, what if a God, the exact opposite of the one you've just described, could exist? Would you want him to? He was jolted again, just, just thinking about the idea. What do you mean, he says, like what? So I offered a totally different picture. Well, what if a God could exist who is nothing but total goodness, perfectly just, perfectly merciful to everyone all the time? A God who always does the right thing toward every person. A God who would literally give everybody total freedom to decide their own destiny and never in a million years torture anybody who didn't agree with him. Now, what if a God could exist who is literally the kind of person who would rather die than commit an injustice against any person? I mean, if a God like that could exist, would you want him to? Now, I could see that this was totally new territory for him. But after thinking for just a few seconds, he said what any rational person would have to say. Well, sure, he said, I'd be a fool not to, right? Yeah, right, I agreed with him. Then he said, but, but no way, man, we can't just manufacture whatever God we want. And I agreed with him again. No, we can't manufacture whatever God we want. But he was listening, so I elaborated. Listen, man, I totally resonate with your atheism. 
because I find many of the popular views of God as repulsive as you do. But I believe that the one and only true God is beautiful in the extreme. And you've said that you would want that kind of God to exist if he could. Well, I simply do believe the very thing that you want to believe. So you're not really an atheist, he says to me? Well, actually I am. I'm an atheist in the sense that I don't believe in the cruel, tyrannical God you've just described. But I do believe in God. But I believe in a God who is nothing like the God you don't believe in. So as far as I can see, you haven't rejected my God because the fact is you've never even considered him. I'm asking you to believe in a God of sheer beauty and perfect goodness. And I totally commend you for not believing in the false God that you were raised to believe in. I mean, this guy's mental wheels were turning. And you know what? I found that many people who don't believe in God don't believe in a particular picture of God. A self-serving, threatening tyrant who wants to either control us or damn us. They reject the only option they've ever been taught. While somewhere in their hearts, they desire a God worthy of their love and worship. I mean, what if? What if the God who does exist is nothing at all? Like many popular religions portray God to be. What if God is love in the strongest and most beautiful sense imaginable? What if?